Hi guys, my name is Ash and welcome back to the Custodian YouTube channel. Now you may have heard overnight there was a massive issue with Microsoft Azure, a big DNS problem. Someone misconfigured something from a legacy DNS setup to a more modern DNS setup. Someone got a file or a bit of code wrong and it just all broke. Problem is, no one actually knows how important DNS is to the internet. Without DNS, the internet would pretty much fall apart and be irrelevant. You won't be able to do your online shopping, you won't be able to send parcels, you'd have to actually walk to talk to people because Facebook Messenger won't be about, you won't have any of that. So we're going to go over what DNS is, how it works, and how important it is for you. So what actually happens when you navigate to your favourite website? My favourite website personally is custodiandc.com for obvious reasons. So when I navigate to custodiandc.com in my browser, what goes on behind the scenes quicker than a blink of the eye? That's what I'm going to explain to you. When you navigate to your website, your operating system has to make a DNS query. So it travels into the abyss of the internet. Gets picked up by a recursive DNS server, so that's step one. Hits a recursive DNS server. Your operating system has told the recursive DNS server, I need the resource for custodiandc.com. At this point, the recursive DNS server goes and does its thing. First thing it does, it talks to a root server. The root server gives the recursive server where to look for the TOD. The TOD in this instance is the .com bit of our domain. The TLD server controls all of that, so the recursive server needs to know how to get to it. The root server says, well, I don't have custodiandc.com. Try the .com servers. So that sends the IP of one of the many .com servers, and the recursive server goes, great, I'll try them. It takes a walk, not literally, a walk over to the TLD server and says, okay, I've got custodiandc.com. Do you have the records for it? Not me. But according to my records, custodiandc.com's name server is dns1.custdc.net, one of our own servers. So again, the recursive server gets given that information by the TOD server. And it goes, OK, let's go to dns1.custdc.net. Takes a trip to DNS1, which is the authoritative name server for this particular domain. Once it gets there, it says, OK, I need to know where custodiandc.com lives. The authoritative server goes, actually, yeah, I know where that is. Here's the IP address of the server. So the authoritative server gives the recursive server the IP address of the server at which the files for the custodian DC website that you guys know and love lives. At this point, the recursive server says, OK, in order to get to that, you need to go to this server. The operating system picks it up. Brilliant. OK, I'll go there. But what actually happens once it's got back here? Well, your browser makes a GET request to the server. The server has one IP address, could have more than one IP address. But nine times out of 10, you'll have 15, 20, 100 websites on one IP. So your browser has to make the request to the server and say, OK, server 192.168.11, I need the files for custodiandc.com. In the background, the server's going, OK, that's not custodian DC, that's not custodian D. Oh, there it is, custodian DC. The files are located here. So it goes to the directory on the server where those files are, does all the, all the um, compiling on that side if it's PHP, sends it back to the browser, and you get custodiandc.com. This is the backbone of the internet. The internet and the World Wide Web are different. The internet is a load of networks. This, however, is a massive, massive part of the internet. Without DNS, you wouldn't be able to watch your favourite cat videos, you wouldn't be able to watch our videos, you wouldn't be watching this. Think of it as yellow pages for the internet. If I said to you, I'll oh, just take that to John's house. Where's John's house? You'd go through your yellow pages. Oh look, there's John, there's his address. Same sort of concept. It's correlating a memorable word, such as custodiandc.com, to a random IP address, of which there are many, many millions of. So, yeah, it's just an easy way to get your favourite websites without having to remember 192.168.11 for one website. OK, so what happened in relation to what we've just discussed and what happened with Microsoft Azure last night? Now, this is just a hypothetical um, layout of a DNS setup. It's not necessarily Microsoft's, but it's just to give you an idea of where it broke down. So if this was the Azure.com authoritative name server, the one that holds all of the records for, say, vms.azure.com, dbs.azure.com, effectively what happened is this little bit here failed. There was no way 
for the DNS resolution to happen. There was no way for the name of vms.azure.com to be converted to an IP address because of this failure. Again, it just goes to show how important it is. There's massive businesses running off these sort of things. They're using virtualization provided by Azure, databases, cloud storage, and just because of a simple failure like that, it all went off. It's such a critical part of modern day life. It's, it runs everything. Not literally, but pretty much everything. So the breakdown here was more than likely human error. It doesn't just stop working. There's so many servers in place that they won't have just one DNS server. They'll have 5, 10, 15, 20 that are all load balanced so that they can sort the requests appropriately. But the problem is, you'll have one master server that replicates all of them. The mess up would have then been distributed across their entire DNS network. So all their customers can no longer access vms.azure.com because when, what we talked about previously, when your browser asks where vms.azure.com is, no one knows because it's broken. There's no way to convert that to that. So unfortunately these things happen, but it just it's just a reminder of how critical DNS is and how important it is for technical people like myself, my colleagues, your IT department in your business to understand how this works because you could have a customer report a problem that is DNS related and if you don't fully understand how it works, you might not resolve it you might resolve it, but it takes longer. At the end of the day, if you know how it works, when the customer's telling you the problem, you've, you've done a diagnosis in your head before you've even hung up the phone. You know where the problem is. It's, it's just good to know how a massive part of the internet works. So we'll leave it at that because that's a lot of DNS stuff we've covered today. I mean, it's probably about eight minutes this video so far, so taking a lot of DNS information for now, we're going to round it up. If there's any more topics you want us to discuss, leave it in the comments section below and we'll follow up. We'll do some more content on that topic. We can't promise it because we do occasionally get a lot of requests for certain videos. We'll do our best. Leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.